Welcome to Faith That Works, exploring the changed lives of those living by faith. Your host, Bob McHouston, will spotlight ordinary people who have discovered for themselves a faith that works. Hello and welcome to another program of A Faith That Works. You know, the Word of God is very clear uh, about God demonstrating His own love toward you and toward us. And while we were yet sinners, Christ died. For by grace that uh, He gave us through faith, and it's uh, not of works lest any man should boast, but when we believe that the way uh, to God, reconciliation to God, uh, that He provided for us through Christ. When we believe that by faith and we confess with our mouth, Jesus is Lord, believe in our heart, God raised Him from the dead, we're saved. Christ comes in us and what comes out of that is a faith that works. And that's the name of this program, A Faith That Works. And we welcome you again. And uh, tonight we've got a, a guest that we've had on before. Had a lot of great things. It ended so well uh, last time. We had so much more to talk about, so we brought him back again tonight. And before I introduce him, I want to offer you a gift from us to you. Uh, on the screen, you will see a book um, that uh, Bob McHouston wrote, uh, and it's yours. Uh, you just dial the number, uh, give us your address, and uh, we'll send it right out to you, free of charge. We want you to have that as a thank you from us. So tonight, uh, we have with, again with us David Smith. Uh, David's a youth minister uh, in Nettleton? Nettleton, that's Nettleton, right. that's yes. right. And so David has got just a tremendous amount of, I mean, the more I talk with him, the more I listen to him, he just, he has so much that the Lord has given him as a gift uh, in a lot of different areas. But young people is one of them. So tonight, uh, David, uh, thank you for coming, brother. Thank you. And uh, tonight I really want to try to focus on this, this, this topic that we talked about last time, and it's young people, after they graduate high school, they go off to this place called college, hmm. a university. Um, you know, I don't know what it was like when you went to high school, uh, you know, but senior year was the great thing. I mean, we talked about, I mean, we, we sat there and we all looked back and, you know, most people had a pretty decent experience. Uh, but man, you know, here is this 18-year-old uh, that just graduated and is about to go off to school. Um, you're a youth minister, so you get to see that. But not only that, um, a lot's going on in school or at a university that's being taught. Um, not all bad, but... The big thing is, is they're going into a different life. I mean, they're totally, they're going to be by themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember as a parent when mine went, and my wife and I, uh, after we dropped him off, we left. Um, I was trying to console her, and two minutes later, I was bawling. Yeah. You know, I was crying. Yeah. And that was ICC. Yeah. <laughs> it was just right up the road, you know, yeah. 20 miles. But... Um, Tell me this, what, what are some concerns that you sort of see or what are some, some things as a parent uh, and, and a young person? I want to talk about several things, but what should we expect before sending them off to go well, to school? I think that, you know, you were talking about your, your high school experience. You're talking about when you graduate. I think that as we get older, uh, it, it becomes evident that as time passes, things change. Another factor is where were you? Uh, I, I came from a very small town school and uh, I remember not really knowing how different the world was outside of there. I had been uh, safe at home, not really insulated, but naturally so because of the size of the town. So students are very often going off to a place where for the first time uh, people are going to want to um, forward an agenda on them and they don't really care who they are. My experience was I went to a, a major university right out of high school. I was not a particularly great student in that I was smart and I knew how to, how to know things, but I wasn't really great at doing school work. Mm -hmm. And then I get to my college, I went to Mississippi State, and all of a sudden I realize 
I'm a number and I'm going to have to swim and it's upstream and then you get into the to the room with the people who are going to be determining how well you're doing and they don't care who your parents are mm. they don't care what your hobbies and interests are they yeah. they don't care how sweet of a person you are they're wanting to see results mm. and that person suddenly has this great deal of control over mm. your destiny Wow. and very often even though um, I had nice people who were my uh, university teachers and things like that and I'm sure they intended well and but there was this expectation that they were going to get it to me uh, one way or the other that all those little things that I had learned in little town America right. weren't really the truth yeah. and that they were going to expand to me the real truth of things and um, and of course at the time at that age I'm going through a lot of crises in, in my faith and it was just this perfect storm yep. of self-doubt and then being exposed to a lot of new ideas and those ideas being worth a letter grade or a yeah. number grade. Yeah. So you had, to, you had to find some way of putting them inside yourself. So when students leave home, I think the big thing that my parents succeeded in doing mm -hmm. was letting me know uh, weekend after weekend, letter by letter, phone call yep. by phone call, that they were there. Yeah. Yeah. that they were going to be there, they were going to be consistent. So for students, my encouragement would be, uh, you have to understand that the people at the university are just people. Right. They don't have the answer to everything. That's, mm -hmm. you know, if anything, university is this admittance that we mm -hmm. don't have all the information mm -hmm. yet. Let me, can I ask this question? Yeah, sure. Uh, because, and I, and I should have built that foundation in the beginning too, but let's sort of take that. Uh, you know, here we are uh, in North Mississippi, mm -hmm. and and man, you know, pretty much our youth groups are, you know, these these kids, uh, yeah, they're going to learn about Jesus at church. Uh, hopefully, it's happening at home. Mm -hmm. A good foundation, a good root that's there. Uh, you know, but they they come up through it, and we're thinking. Man, I'm so excited in their 10th grade year, so excited as a parent in their 11th grade year, in their 12th grade year. And man, they're, they're part of a great group of young people. And man, it is all about Christ. Yeah. They've gone off to camps. They've gone off to uh, mission group places, music groups, you know, part of a lot of stuff. Disciple Now mm -hmm. and, and a lot of those things. And then all of a sudden, you're alone. Yeah, you're, you're outnumbered. thinking this person leaving my house knows Jesus. Mm -hmm. I'm a parent, and I'm thinking that, and they're going to this university, and they're 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 about to see things and be a part of things, as you were saying. Yeah, these things, and uh, what are they up against? It depends. Yeah, it, it it depends on your on your line of study, of course. There are some things you go to college for. And um, they really don't care philosophically where you land because they're teaching you something technical, uh, mm -hmm. engineering. You know, they, um, it's when you take the classes that are um, more arts-based and mm -hmm. are more interpersonal that they begin to forward the social agendas and things like that. In my case, I, t I ended up taking uh, philosophy classes. And of course, that was just, uh, uh, you know, drinking from a fire hose type thing because inside of three months you're going to hear every, <laughs> or at least a sampling from every, you know, philosophy, good or bad, over right. the past 200 years or whatever, yeah. and you've got to absorb all that. And at the same time, you're trying to hold on to a simple faith you thought you had. And I think that's part of it, mm -hmm. is that students arrive on campus and they, they, they may believe, but that belief has not been stress tested against a very strong and well-funded and, and, and accepted social and philosophical background that a university represents. Mm. And um, a lot of times, they're, they're, you know, they've gotten there through their own formative years and everything, and they found a place that agrees with them, and they have their safety. And I remember being a, <clears throat> a college student, young college student, and realizing that they thought of my Christianity not only as a little bit of a... Uh, sentimental this is just what you've got kind of thing but they also saw it as an active threat about of what they had going on there 
Wow. That that was the other. Wow. The other side of the field. And here we are, 2017. How much has it changed? I mean, it's, it, it, it's incredible. I mean, you see colleges where students are debating now whether people should have freedom of speech. You know, and they, they don't, they're not sure because somebody's feelings might get hurt. Right. And, um, and do we have freedom of individuality? And they're, they're, they're not sure about that. Why? Because society has been erasing, scrubbing away God, the eternal, yeah. our final destination. And so when all you have is the here and now, then people can come in with philosophies and change your mind about things. Mm. And, and after all, you don't know what to think. You're just trying to make it through your courses and have your teachers. And then after a while, that's what you think. Mm. Mm. It's, it's, it's way harder than it was when I was going through it. So from, from that school or from where they are and looking back at, at a parent or let's say we do, and, and you know we're people that know parents that have tenth graders that are going to be there one day. Mm -hmm. Ninth graders are going to be there. What do what do we? How do we help a parent? What do we tell a parent as as ministers, as pastors? What do we say to them? You need to do this with them uh, at home. You know, because a lot of times they sort of depend upon us, or they depend yeah. upon the staff to, or yeah. somebody to root them and ground them. I'm guessing the, the big challenge for parents sending youth off to school mm -hmm. is uh, realizing that they are going to be challenged probably for the first times in their lives in a place that's no longer safe. Um, mm. You yeah. know, your parents have given you your faith. If, if they've been good parents and they've given you your faith, so we're assuming those things, then all of a sudden you're, you're on a campus where either spoken or unspoken, there is this uh, disavowment mm. of, you know, n not even just you know, like the Old Testament God, yeah. but of anything bigger than the university explanation for the way the world works. Mm. And uh, that's, you know, that was my experience in that I got to college and um, my, my university professors were, were well-intended people. They were smart. They weren't out to get me. But there was this base assumption that all of that hometown school church learning you had done was nice and quaint and it had its place, but that's over now. Mm. And you've got to get in on the real world. You've got to get in on, on how things really operate. And they were going to, you know, disillusion you of that, you know, or of that idea. Yeah. So it's, it's almost like the thought about salvation. Person saved. Okay. Took care of that. Now we're at a different place. Yeah, you yeah. Know, I did that when I was twelve, but now I mean it's a it's a transitional thing where you're saying it's almost. Uh, I mean you're in school now. It's a disillusioned. Yeah, because you're you're being asked to take on these adult things. You're going. Yeah. You're training for your career. All right? right. And like you said, if if in churches all we ever taught was salvation and you're good. Yeah. Then what came after that was really just up to you. I mean, yeah. and so churches, you know, I think need to be more about training people after they come out of the water or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, to, to, to move on in, into the next part of Christianity, discipleship, right. uh, growing in knowledge of Christ, growing in the knowledge of God, mm -hmm. deepening your mm -hmm. faith, mm -hmm. and then really going out and sharing it again. It's supposed yeah. to be duplication yeah, right you're supposed to, to be that way and right. if you keep following that okay so when but when you get to college they don't have a place for that they don't they, they're not going to encourage that in you unless you have a, a student union or something like that that does that mm. uh, and even then that's considered a separate thing that's not the main business of of the university mm. so mm. wow yeah and then there's the party life mm -hmm. right yeah the uh, you know, you went to school, and and of course, as you shared with me earlier, that wasn't a, that wasn't a huge part. You were a pretty simple guy. Oh yeah, you know, I was, right. I was pretty but, dull. <laughs> I mean, now I mean, your, your big universities—not that they didn't have fraternities and everything back there then, mm -hmm. but you know, whether it's the Grove or whether it whatever yeah. is at Mississippi State or mm -hmm. you know, uh, here's the testing of of what am I going to do. Uh, I've got this freedom, yeah. You know, so 
it was that it, it really gets back to that surrender you know back uh, you know just how much are, have you followed are you really following right. Christ is this a journey right. uh, to the end for you yeah. right yeah and so uh, I think uh, we were discussing something about a uh, um, I don't know something about some Okay. And, yeah, the, yeah. The, the deal, the this deal is, is funny. Okay, okay go you go right in, and, and just like the educational experience is yeah. jarring, the dorm life is, and that's what I went to do. I was, okay. I was I, like I said, I was pretty dull, and I didn't, I didn't have a whole lot. But even by then, the standard at college was you went there and you you went crazy with your moralities and with all the things you want to do, your liberties, and and your parents are far away and they weren't checking in on you as often as they could. And so everybody tests their limits. And I saw guys implode uh, who didn't know that it was up to them to stop. And they didn't plan on stopping, and they couldn't. And I saw those guys happen. But I was really, I was raised in a very traditionalist home. I had a very strong father figure. I was afraid of his authority. And so when I went to college, it wasn't so much that I had this great relationship with God. It's just that I was still in fear of my parents. And when I got there, there were so many things that I had not ever done. I was, I'd never drank. I'd never done drugs. I'd, uh, I'd only seen one marijuana cigarette when I was in high school. And, and here I am on college all of a sudden, and the guy across the hall is bringing in bales of the stuff. And I'm trying to figure out, what, did, you know, what is this? What is all this? And they found out that Mr. Church Boy had not done any of those things. And it got to where there was a few guys up and down the, the, the dorm and whatnot who said, man, we're going we're gonna to raise some money, and if you'll ever split a beer with us or drink a beer for us and things like that, we'll give you, and I think it got up like, like three or four, almost $400 or something like that. And I may be remembering wrong, but anyway, it doesn't matter. I never did it, but they could not believe that I wasn't going to go crazy. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and I think I was saved by several things there. Like I said, I had a respect for my parents. I did have a relationship with God, although at that point it was on the rack mm. and it was, it was having a tough time. Wow. And also I had in me, um, and this was not good, I had to work my way out of this, this whole, well, I don't do that so I'm better than you uh, type thing. Yeah. And God used that to protect me, but later on I had to look back at that and go, that's just pride, that's not... Mm. That's not salvation. Right. That's just you, you being high on yourself instead of some substance. Mm. And mm. Um, so, mm. you know, the party thing is going to be there. But, yeah, I guess, you know, I, I'm not a, a parent of a child of that age, and I, I haven't had that conversation. But I would advise, once again, talk about it at the level you're at. Be sincere. Yeah. Yeah. Tell why you're concerned. Tell yeah. what you believe. Mm -hmm. and, um, and understand that that, that that lifestyle can destroy mm -hmm. their, their academic career, mm -hmm. their relationships mm -hmm. with you as a parent, with each yeah. other, and it can ruin the whole thing. Mm -hmm. If you're having an honest you know, discussion, mm -hmm those things get worked out, yeah. now, you know, it's, yeah. but it's, yeah. it's hard. Wow. You know, one, one thing, David, too, is, I mean, there were some drugs. I mean, I'm 56, so, and there were drugs at school. No, I mean, it was there, like you said, but now there's crystal meth. Oh, yeah. Now there's heroin. And it's starting younger and younger and younger, so it's not college where they're getting faced yeah. with that. It's junior high. Yeah, I mean, no doubt. It's, it's, it's frightening. You know, what's scary is I've never met... And, and I still hadn't, even when drug addiction, uh, you know, when people come through the counseling end of our ministry and we counsel them. And, and I hear this from people also uh, from your rehab places, that a person who really starts into the crystal meth, they, they never leaves them. I mean, right. they will rehab from it, but it's very difficult for them not to come back. So I'm thinking, you know, you go off to school in just a wild party weekend and you say, well, I'm gonna try this stuff because, sure. you know, Ole Miss is playing state or something, I don't know, or yeah. sorority. For, for well, there's all kinds of awkwardnesses that you're trying to get over yeah. and, and trying to be a valid person on your own <sighs> and taking on these adult self-determinate things yeah. is a way of doing that. Yeah, no doubt. Um, but 
So yeah. young people are looking for identity as well. Yeah. I mean, acceptance, the acceptance approval, measuring mm -hmm. up thing, sure. and they're going right into college with that. Yeah. That you know, looking where, where's my part here? Yeah. And academics, yeah, we got to go to school and hope. So that's why they're there, is to get an education, you know, but, but... But you've also got several thousand, if not dozens of thousands of people exactly your age going through the exact same thing, and that's your peer group, and to be honest, that's the people feeding you opinions about what's real and not real in the world, too. Yeah. People just as, I mean, I, I don't mean to be ugly, but people no, just as no. dumb as you are, are telling you all this life advice all of a sudden, and it just sounds like what's going on inside your head or, or close enough. And so if they figured something out, maybe it'll work for you. Mm. And that's how mm. they sell it very often, mm. you know? Mm. They'll tell you, oh, you just, you just haven't tried it yet. But that's the idea. You yeah, know? you know, here's what's sort of crazy. You know, I'm 56, as I said, and I can remember, um, you know, when I first started going to church and, and uh, really strong in the, into my faith after my 30s and but I can remember teenagers graduating and, and, and leaving the youth group and going and mm -hmm. and sure enough I mean you know the mother and father I mean none of none of us are perfect in in training our children and we we've got them involved in in the youth group and and the and you tell me your youth group leader so here's the issue. They're in the youth group. They're going to be okay. So there's this dependency upon you. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, and, and, you know, fortunately, yeah, there were some people that, that are saved. They're, they're changing their life. They had a transformation. And, yes, they go off to school, and, and, and they, they veer off. And, thankfully, uh, you know, a lot of them, uh, came back to the Lord uh, as they had families, mm -hmm. you know, and it was that root, it was that seed. Whew. But now it, it's just, you know, as we've been been sort of talking, there is a there is a liberal progressive teaching within the within the system of uh, just lost, you know, teachings or, or teachers or professors. Uh, that, as you said, are veering them off, and it's, it's like it, uh, even though it was there when you were younger, it just appears to be, it's, it's a very dark place. A, a university can be a very dark place mm -hmm. for a young person. Yeah. And, uh, and it may be that I'm in counseling and I get to see a lot of these mm -hmm. people, you know, and talk to the parents that are really very much concerned. Uh, you know about that. Um, do you? Is there a place for the church to continue to communicate with people, young people when they go off to to yes. school? Should that be a thing that's yeah? And, here, and here's the reason why I believe that is because I know that the unit, the unit of Christianity is the Christian. Yeah. It's a one-on-one -on -one relationship with Jesus Christ. It's a one-on-one -on -one relationship with God. Mm. So you're never at such a point where you can't have a relationship with God. You can't be relating through Christ with God. So yes, it, it's it's going to be tough to kind of keep the traditional forms mm -hmm. relevant if we don't really believe in them. Yeah. But we yeah. are not called to go to any place, be it university That's or right. another town, and find God there. We are called to go to that place and be the light, uh -huh. be the salt. And uh -huh. so if you know that that's your mission, no amount of lack is going to put you out. You mm. know that you're, car you're carrying it with you. So uh, it's good if you find people. It's good if you still have a church family. It's good if you still have church friends and believing friends, but you're, you're called primarily to be a witness. Then that's the message. Yeah. The message is the in-depth uh, accountability or the call to the young person as they're leaving. It's, you're not going there to be a good Christian. Right. You're going there uh, to serve and to show yeah. them what Christ looks like right. as you're ministering and, yeah. and duplicating, you know, yourself uh, or duplicating Christ. And so, 
you know, that challenge, it just, it just seems to me that, you know, a yes in the home, it's got to happen there. That, that's where we're, I mean, and, and even then, it's that challenge, you know, hey, you're going off to, to be tried. You're going off to, yes, get an education, but uh, you are who you are, mm -hmm. not to just go participate, uh, you know, and hope that you're going to be a part of a yeah. Baptist student union. Right. You're going there as a minister of the gospel. Well, basically. and I don't mean to be, I don't mean to be ugly because everybody and every family, and, and now more than ever with society being the way that it is, they have their challenges. But if parents are waiting until their children are sailing out of the harbor before they're worried if they're seaworthy, you know, mm. um, it's going to be tough with that with that person because if you you needed to if you're going to worry about them being Christian and being moral yeah. and being true to God, then that mm -hmm. has to start young, yeah. and that has to be where they are brought up through it. When you're a little, you learn things that little kids learn. I've got a 20-month-old daughter. We're teaching her just her letters. We're trying to teach her to say the alphabet song and mm -hmm. things like that. But mm -hmm. we're not going to her and expecting her to understand Shakespeare. Yeah. Yeah. But somewhere yeah. down the road, that's, that's a possibility sure. for her. So if I'm worried about, but I can't ignore her learning her ABCs and hope that one day she'll pick up Shakespeare. Mm. I have to start where she is and bring her up to be strong enough for each successive stage. Right. And then when, and then, then I can, I can say when I get to the point where I'm having to wave her goodbye and I don't want to think about it, but yeah. you know, I, you. I'm having to wave her goodbye and she's got to go off there on her own. I've done all that I can reasonably do and I've, and I've put her out in the hands of an almighty God. Amen. And if I trust her and him, then that's going to work out. Amen. You know, nothing, there may be a thousand things I do wrong between here and then. Yeah. But God didn't do any of those things wrong. That's so true. Amen. And, and if I can tell her, you know, and that, I'm, as soon as she gets old enough to really understand, I'm going to say, you don't need to put me on a pedestal. Yeah. Um, and she probably won't have any real thoughts of that, <laughs> but uh, you know, yeah. you know, you need to love God. And right. if I'm wrong in the eyes of God, then, mm. then I'm wrong. Mm. It, I'm, just because I'm your dad, just because mm. your mom's your mom, we mm. don't get to supersede God. Mm. And if she knows that in her core, if parents teach children that at that basic level, then by the time they get where the complicated things are, they say, well, yeah, I can go there and gain an education about my career. I can learn about the things of the world and I can become cultured and educated, but morally, mm -hmm. I was, I've got mm -hmm. that handled. Mm. I did that years ago. Mm. And I did that mm. with people who were qualified at the time, my parents, mm. my church workers. I mm. did it. Mm. Wow. You know, this is, this is a thing that we could just keep on going about. And thank you, yeah. David, uh, so very much. Listen, here's the thing. They belong to the Father. He gave them to us. They're a gift. They're a gift from the Lord. And if you have a little one, you know it is. And you know they are, uh, male or female, and they're precious. Uh, we pray for them now as they go off to school. That's where we are. We're praying. We're there for them when they come back. But these are the things that we do. This is a faith that works.